central is emotion and complex. The idea is the centrality of emotion in the process and the relationship of emotion to Jung's idea of the psychological complex. For Sigmund Freud, uh, it was the drive theory that was central to um, what moved things along. Jung was not, uh, part, of, part of his break with Freud was that he was not invested in the idea of a drive theory so much as tracking emotions because he saw the emotions as being related to the numinous qualities that came out from the archetypes and very much connected because the what what we call numinous i'm not going to get into the whole history of the term or what it means but it's sort of a uh an experience of the sacred an emotional experience when we have these really profound uh experiences jung said that that's sort of characteristic of the experience of the encounter with an archetype so we saw emotions as being central and related not to the drives but to the complexes on one hand and to the archetypes on the other. Jung's original conception of the complex was as a feeling toned complex. It, it was shortened to complex, but originally the term was a feeling toned complex. There's an Israeli Jungian analyst named Errol Shalit who wrote a wonderful book on uh, complex and he sort of encapsulated uh, Jung's ideas in this way. He says, this is a quote from Shalit, he says, Complex denotes a network of associations, images, ideas, memories, or the like, clustered around a nuclear archetypal core of meaning and characterized and held together by a common emotional tone. Thus, still quoting Shalit here, thus the complex embodies three elements, an archetypal core around which personal experiences cluster, and an emotional tone that serves as the gravitational force that holds this macrocosm together. And uh, many people will talk about it in, as being like an onion. On the outside is the surface symptoms, as we see in this diagram on the right. There's the deeper down, we get the associated, as we, as we kind of work on the complex, we get past the surface symptoms, see them as symbolic of something, hopefully. And so, by doing that, we get to the associated uh, experiences, past experiences, personal experiences. And as we get more and more working through it, emerging from the center and highly numinously charged is the archetypal core. And why would there be an archetypal core? Because when we have highly charged, difficult experiences at any time in life, it's a certainty that other humans have had these experiences before. And that is what's archetypal about them. In other words, it's, it, they're common. And, and it's often very healing just to recognize that what we think is a very personal, maybe shameful, maybe a hurtful experience that many, many, many humans throughout history have had these similar types of experiences. And when we get to that archetypal core, we begin to then have access to this numinous energy, access to releasing emotion and getting a better handle on developing again when we when we're connecting with the archetypes we're beginning to a differentiate the ego from the unconscious we're less uh, possessed and sort of uh, encased in that unconscious world but we're also uh, developing that dialogue and allowing that energy to flow so we have access to it to uh, to do our work to serve our families and our communities etc so when we embark on the project of individuation, the first thing we encounter on our inner journey, as we saw earlier, are the objects found in the unconscious, the personal unconscious. Jung referred to these collectively as the shadow. However, in practice, the elements, the sort of constituent uh, parts of the shadow that we encounter are what Jung called the complexes. As Errol Shalit suggests, we first discover memories and images of personal experiences after we usually we're drawn uh, our attention is drawn to them because of some symptoms some something that's interfering the complex is uh, intervening in ways that we usually do not want it to intervene in our lives so we explore into it and as we tease it apart we ex find personal experiences clustered around an archetypal core and held together by a common emotional tone hence 
Jung's uh, term a feeling toned complex. So our initial dialogues and other active imagination exercises would likely revolve in one way or another around whatever our individual complexes are. And again, not only are we going to have a perhaps an aptitude or a tendency towards a certain kind of active imagination, in other words, some people art, some people movement, some people um, writing things down. Jung, obviously very intellectual, loved myth. He'd just written Symbols of Transformation. So he wrote this very mythic kind of book and a mythic kind of scroll with his red book. Someone else, uh, for me to do that might not be ideal. For someone else, it might not be ideal. We want the our own uh, typology and our own uh, personal experiences and, and ideally our own complexes to dictate to one degree or another uh, where it's going to go. Because the dialogue, certainly at first, this dialogue with the unconscious is going to have to go through, have to deal with complexes in one way or another.